Hey, welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. I wanted to talk a little bit about my personal story and why I became a ham radio operator. Now, everybody comes into this hobby for different reasons. Some people literally grew up around radios and other people don't get into the hobby until maybe their 40s, 50s, or even 60s and have almost no experience with radio whatsoever. Everyone's story is unique and this is my story. You know, for me, I'm one of the ones that grew up around radio. My father has a background from the U.S. military in radio communications. Uh, he grew up in the heyday of CB radio in his time. I think those two things combined is what led to his interest, which then translated down to me. Um, I can remember growing up around my father and him constantly wanting to get on the roof and make adjustments to the antenna, um, do distance testing between our home base station and our mobile setup and our vehicles growing up in Wisconsin. Um, I mean, those are a lot of my early childhood memories that I grew up around, um, installing new radios and running new coax throughout the house. Um, so that's really where I got my start. In fact, many of the people that you know I grew up around as a kid that listened to me literally on the radio grow up over the years from being four, five, six years old to, you know, I used to run into some of those people when I'd come back after college being 25, 26, 27 years old. And the same people are still out there on 11 meters uh, in the town that I'm from. So that's my lived experience. I grew up around radio. Uh, you know, I said, burned them up, fixing them, tweaking, tuning, like that's just my upbringing. Uh, and so when I was 13 or 14, I approached the local club in my area and was thinking about studying for my technician. This probably would have been about, Oh, let me think about, let me do the math here. This probably would have been about the mid to mid to late 90s, 95, 96, 97, somewhere in there. For various reasons, I didn't end up taking my technician exam at that time, but I kind of put it aside for middle school and high school, but I came back to it after high school. As soon as I graduated and I was getting ready to head off to college, I was like, this is the time to get my license. So before I went off to school, um, I went to the local field day in June sat for my exam and got my technician in one try without even studying, which was fantastic, right? I think I may have re reviewed the book twice. Like I just skimmed through it real quick. But again, I had grown up around a lot of this stuff, um, listening to the scanner growing up. My dad had a portable scanner and a base scanner. Uh, I used to listen to local repeaters. I used to listen to the Sunday night ham radio net, including the, um, I said the news programming, you know, that comes on with uh, all the local nets. I mean, that's literally my childhood is sitting there with a portable scanner listening to ham radio news across the local net on Sunday nights. Um, I mean, literally in my childhood in a nutshell. Um, another fond memory for me was in my bedroom. I used to take a boom box, hook the telescoping and metal antenna up to aluminum foil and string that aluminum foil all over my ceiling and then use it to pick up AM broadcast stations from around the world at night. Um, I mean, that's what I spent my time doing as a kid and I loved every minute of it. So when I finally got my te technician license when I was done with high school, going to college, in college, oh, I was really active. Uh, I was using local repeaters. I was helping out with storm spotting when I could. Um, I used to go to local park to operate before parks on the air was even a thing. Um, I was doing it all the time because I really couldn't operate from my dorm room, um, at least without blowing out a bunch of speakers and causing RFI and problems and all kinds of stuff. In fact, um, I don't have any pictures of it. I wish I would have. I used to jam a, a copper J pole diagonally in my dorm room window on the fourth floor at the University of Wisconsin. That was a lot of fun. People go, what, what's that in your window? And I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. Um, so that was my college experience. I had my tech license, you know, I was 20 years old. Then after college, um, moved out to Colorado, was still a tech, and I was a technician for probably about 11 or 12 years um, before I even thought about getting my general. I was having tons of fun with my technician privileges. I mean, I was doing HFCW, um, I had good friends of mine that were general. We would operate together on the general class bands when we were together at local parks. Um, I really just didn't have a real push to want to upgrade. Finally, after 12 years, I went to a local ham fest in Colorado and just out of the moment, they made a PA announcement like, hey, we're having testing. Anybody want to come take your test? Come sit now. And I was like, I'm here. I might as well give it a shot. I didn't study at all. I sat down and missed it by one question. So then, of course, I had to go in, study a few sections real fast, and then one week later at the next ham fest, I passed and got my general ticket. That was like four or five years ago now. I think it's been like 13, 14, 15. My math's bad. I can't do math right now. Um, but that's how long it's been for me. And like I said, I just grew up around it. And, you know, I've always wanted to continue to expand my knowledge. And I really don't have a push to be an extra because I know I could go and memorize the answers and just go take the exam. But... 
I mean, I, I don't want to do that. I want to continue to learn, continue to experiment. And when I'm at that point where I feel like I have that knowledge that a that an extra class should and would have, then I'll go and take that exam. But um, I just don't think I'm there yet. So, I mean, that's kind of my story. I mean, why I became a ham, you know, I said certainly it was um, the love of radio. Like, the, be able, the ability to key up your radio and have your voice go around the world and talk to somebody out of nowhere that you have no clue where your voice is going and hold a conversation with somebody, whether it's another state or another country, um, that to me is still fascinating to this day. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I hope the younger generation that's coming up uh, will continue to have that even though they grew up around the internet um, in a much more connected society than I did growing up. Um, so that was one thing. The other thing was storm spotting. I said I'm kind of a weather nut, so um, that was a really attractive part to me as well um, that I still try to participate in when I can, but it gets really tough when you have a family. So for me, it's, it's just a fascination with RF and, and what it can do. I mean, who hasn't been thrilled with making a contact on a half a watt, you know, thousands of miles away, um, you know, designing your own antennas and tweaking and changing antenna arrangements and seeing what it does to your signal and understanding how RF behaves. Like that's what gets me excited. And that's what keeps me coming back to this hobby again and again and again. And it's so true. Ham radio is the hobby of a thousand hobbies. I tell to new hams all the time. You could spend 10, 15, 20 years and get pretty proficient in one area of the hobby and you're only scratching the surface. And you'll spend your whole lifetime experimenting and still not become an expert in all the different areas you can do inside of ham radio. And that's why I think it's one of my favorite hobbies ever because there's always something to do always something to experiment with. Tell me why you became a ham radio operator. I'm curious. Everyone's always got a story and I want to hear uh, you know, why you became a ham. So drop me a comment down below. Let me know. Uh, send me a tweet. Send me a DM. Whatever you want to do. I just love hearing what got people interested in the hobby. So thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you again next time.